everything you, you normally do at practice last night? I do. I do. Um, I, th I think I saw him slide feet first for the first time uh, on Saturday for that first down, but then of course later he kind of reverted back. He's kind of out of control. Yeah. Is, is that something that you talk to him a lot about, sliding feet, feet, feet first, and, and will you coach him to do that going forward, especially given your situation quarterback? Absolutely. You know, I mean, and, and I mean, we run our quarterbacks. That's what we do. Uh, so our quarterbacks have to be a part of it. But yeah, you got to be smart, and you know, we coach him to be smart. And he's a young player. And, you know, that wasn't very smart. Uh, he was out of control and you know, just, I love his effort, but you know, if there's a, there's a time for that and, and then there's a time to let's live for another play. And uh, so, you know, he just got to, cause he can run, uh, you know, Trevor can move. He, he, he can navigate the pocket very well. And I think as, as, as we continue to watch him grow, that's, that's one of his best attributes is his ability. I mean, you know, they, the one that he scrambled on, that was a scramble. You know, they went two man on us on first down, and he recognized it. He let the pass lane set. You know, he knows that they got nobody for him, and he made a nice little eight yard gain. Got down. It's now second and two, and and that's what good quarterbacks do. You know, you got great recognition that way, and, and uh, he's got the ability to make you pay if you give him some of those advantageous uh, opportunities to run, uh, and then he can he can extend plays. But that was a that was a breakdown in the play. He's expecting protection, and we didn't we didn't set the edge the way we needed to. And it gets uh, it just it just was it just was a bad decision on his part. So yeah, he'll learn from it moving forward. Was it more of a concussion issue or a neck issue after you had a chance to evaluate? Uh, they felt more of a neck issue. You know, it was kind of he 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 got he got he got the crap knocked out of him, and uh, you know, so I mean, it was head and neck. And like I said, we, you know, he had some pain, and you know they have a whole protocol of all that stuff. And I mean, it's you know they you get put in you get put in concussion protocol, you know, uh, for anything that creates a symptom. You know, it's just not something that you mess with. And uh, so I mean, like, like I said, told you all the day, he's trying to he wanted to come back and play the second half, but you know, there's just there's just just don't know. So they they did not feel comfortable. Especially with what the pain he was having in his neck, and uh, but he he really responded well after the game, and, and you know they they put him in the protocol, uh, and they have all their there's a there's a metrics or whatever I have no idea what they do. Uh, he uh, he was really good Sunday that night Sunday, and then same thing yesterday came in and worked out Monday morning, uh, and uh, looked good last night. What was your assessment of how he played? Before? Played well. He played well. Uh, he's sixty-something percent completion. I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I want to say he was. Um, I don't know. What was he? Maybe ten or fifteen or something like that, or maybe maybe a few more attempts than that. Uh, but uh, twelve or seventeen or something like that. But he but he had a good game. He missed a couple throws that that uh, he would like to have had back. Uh, I think he was just a little amped up. But he did a nice job. He did a nice job. Uh, we had the one screw up on the exchange, uh, which was costly. Uh, but uh, I think he got good experience and, and, and kind of got that first start out of the way too and all the stuff with that. I, just, I think he's uh, in a good spot and, and, uh, and Bryce as well. So it worked out well in the end. Trevor Dortch lines up in the slot, which is a lot of stress on the safeties and the linebackers and Isaiah Simmons specifically in this game. Do you guys got a plan for this guy? Yeah, uh, we got a plan. You know, we got to execute the plan, uh, but we definitely got a plan, no doubt. But he is a really good player, especially again. If you, there, I mean, there, there's a lot of times that the ball's getting thrown and the quarterback is 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 a yard and a half, two yards behind the center. <laughs> so, and that puts pressure because you know he they they're well designed and well schemed, and he'll buy time, buy time, and boom, he'll slip you. Because uh, what they're trying to do is create clean throwing lanes. Uh, for that quarterback, and uh, but he's a, he's a he's a problem. He's an handful. He's a very good player, and they'll move him around. Uh, they'll they'll move him around and, and do different things with him. Uh, they're gonna make sure he touches the ball uh, for sure. He's their guy. What's the biggest difference between this Wake Forest team and previous Wake Forest teams? Not much. I mean, the biggest difference is there's some unknowns on the defensive side going into this game because because they got a new guy that's calling it, and we've only got you know one game 
against a good team that they were just way overmatched against. Uh, so that's the biggest unknown. Uh, but they are who they are on offense. They, they, they believe in what they do. They have an identity. They've recruited well to what they do. Uh, and uh, you know, they, they're built to run the ball. That's what they do. I mean, they're going to run the ball uh, and, and, and try to action you to death. And so you've just got to do a great job uh, with, uh, with executing your plan and trying to be disruptive up front, uh, try to win your matchups against them, and, uh, and leverage the ball. They will try to get outside of you as well. And, uh, and then you got to play, you got you to play man coverage. You got to be able to play man coverage and, and win the matchup. Is a uh, substitution even more in, more of an issue with them than Syracuse? It seems like they don't start a lot on offense. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. You got to go. You got to get your hand down quick. Uh, get the signal in quick because, uh, like I said, there's sometimes they're snapping. I don't even know how they got the play called. Uh, but most of what they're doing is built in. You know, and this quarterback is really, really confident, really schooled up in, in what he's looking at. Uh, and, and then they just do a nice job. You know, I mean, I know they're. They're minus three, I think, in the turnover margin, but but they do a nice job uh, with the exchange and, and the timing of, you know, hey, you got it, I got it. I mean, they have a good feel for that. Uh, it's kind of a unique tempo, the way the back, you know, he's not just a downhill guy. It's just kind of like golf cart speed, you know, and just trying to just create uh, gaps, you know, in your defense, and then he hits it or he pulls it. Uh, so there's just uh, they 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 they're very well coached and um, and they do a great job of teaching their scheme. What do you have to see kind of turnover like timeline wise for him to be able to go Saturday at Lake or or do you expect him to be able to play? Oh, I definitely expect him to do a play. Uh, I mean, like I said, that's why I put him back in practice last night, and uh, you know I didn't I just don't see anything. Why would, a reason why I would. Coach, uh, going back to Dolores, she and Kayvon Laws went to the same high school. Was he ever a guy that was on you know, radar when you were scouting, uh, scouting Kayvon? No. That doesn't mean he's not a great player. It's just, you know, a lot of times for us, as you all know, I mean, we might, uh, what year is he? Uh, he's a redshirt sophomore, so third year, whoever we recruit then. A lot of times we will we'll have our number committed already. Early, we weren't on Kayvon. We weren't on Kayvon until January. I didn't know who Kayvon Wallace was until two weeks before signing day. Uh, but that was because we didn't have scholarships for DBs that year. And you know, all of a sudden we had like four guys leave after that first national championship game because uh, I have to count on them coming back. Um, and they were they decided to leave, so we ended up having some spots, and we were able to go get uh, Nolan Turner. Who's really turning into a great player for us? We were able to get uh, Isaiah Simmons out of Kansas, and we got Kayvon, and then we got Trayvon Mullen. Uh, that was our four. So, you know, we hit we hit it out a uh, home run uh, in, in January uh, on those guys. Give us some insight on the balance. Seems like an RPO mindset is we're going to see what the defense does and take what they give us, and then on the other end, at some points like Saturday, regardless of what they do. Yeah, well, I just think that uh, some of our best plays were, were RPOs last week. Um, and just, just once we got the run game call going, uh, the action game, we had a couple of just pure action calls, and then we had some really good RPOs <coughs> where, we, where, we, where we pulled it. And they, even, even the, the touchdown to uh, the one that Travis broke uh, on the right side there on our sideline, toward the, the, the one before the last, uh, that was an RPO. And uh, you know, Chase did. That's just that's a quarterback being ready. And uh, he went in and he, he made the right decision. And uh, and so he gave the ball. You know, we actually we actually had a uh, it was I thought we were going to get the pass on that, but they stayed. They kept the safety high. We handed it. Uh, Travis was able to, to bounce it and make a guy miss, and it was a touchdown. So, but it starts with the quarterback making the right decision uh, first of all, and then uh, but. You know, we got in a situation Saturday where, you know, I, obviously Chase was a little, he was a little wobbly uh, early, and and we didn't want to put a lot on his plate. I just felt like we had to find a way 
to just force. And I thought, man, I thought we were, I thought we were just better up front. I thought we could, I thought we could, I thought we were better on the back end, and that if we could just get to the second level, uh, we could get positive yards and stay on schedule. And uh, and so just a matter of, you know, stopping some of the, the negative plays and critical mistakes. And so we just forced the issue. And, and if you watch the tape, that's why there were some plays where they had guys there. They just did, couldn't tackle us. Uh, our guy was better than their guy. And when you're playing really, really good people, uh, that's not always the case, you know. And so you have to, you, you, that's why you want to have balance in your offense. And you, you want to be able to take advantage of, of what they give you. And that's, we've always done that. But Saturday, it was a situation where I felt like it was putting too much pressure on, on Chase early. You know, let's 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 let this kid settle down a little bit. Um, you know, especially after he threw the pick. You know, TJ ran a good route. And, you know, he just made a bad throw. We missed the little quick out cut. I mean, so we're getting off schedule. You know, trying to run our offense, and uh, and it just really was a, a reflection of just him, just just kind of just first time playing in that situation. But as we got the run game going. So we just started changing up. We just gapped them, and then we zoned them. Uh, we just kept it. We just kept a good mix going, and uh, our guys did a great job. Uh, the, the, we had some really good blocks up front. We had some really good blocks at tight end. We had some really good blocks at wide out. It was just a mindset that I think everybody took on that hey, if we're going to get it done, and the backs knew that you know I told them, hey, you guys we're going to have to get it done. Let's go, and uh, so. Uh, everybody took great pride in that, and then once we kind of settled in a little bit, it, when we had to have it, uh, and you saw that when he came back and he threw two strikes in a row to Justin Ross, I was like, all right, all right, this kid's, he's kind of got his, this is, all right, Chase is back, all right, we've got, we got Chase Bryce now, uh, we got the full, the full guy out there, and, and so that, that was, that was, that was critical for us, um, but you know, it was just sometimes that you got to find a way. We went with what we thought was best and uh, put it on the guys up front and their backs. We kind of we kind of took a lot of the options away from the quarterback. Uh, but when we're at our best, that quarterback is armed. Some of our best plays. I mean, and, and listen, we've played five games, and right now after five games, we're on a we're a career. This is a history, the all-time career high for yards per play. I mean, we're averaging over seven yards a play, which if the season ended today would be the all-time high in the history of Clemson football. Uh, so we've been unbelievably explosive. Uh, and, uh, you know, and even Trevor. I mean, Trevor's played four and a half games, and he's, he's like top ten in the country. Uh, I mean, he's, he's done a nice job. He's, he's the reason for that. As one of the reasons for that explosiveness, our, the way our backs are playing, uh, we're just we, – if we just got – we just got to clean up some stuff. You know, stupid penalties, stupid turnovers, costly critical errors, some technique things fundamentally that we got to do a better job, especially on some of the twists up front. Just recognition of a few things. I mean, we're, we're really that, I mean, we're like right there from, from I think, being special on offense. So uh, we, we haven't even scraped the surface of what I think that we can be, uh, really on either side of the ball. But we're five and zero, oh and, and we're we're a work in progress. But we're getting better, we're getting better. What types of running game, coach? The uh, offensive line play on Saturday was uh, pumping in blocks with the points. Can you, can you point out a few guys in that offensive line? That can really yeah, I think I think we played eight, and six of the eight graded a winner, and uh, had a, had a winning grade. So so I'm uh, I was really proud of them. I mean, they, and then you know again, Tremaine Ankrum's gone the second series. Pollard's got to go play tackle. He hadn't played much tackle this year. Uh, he's practiced, um, and now you got Cade in there. Now we got Savinka having to play a lot. I think it was as it, as it all turned out, it was great, it was especially for Gage, for him to have to go in and play so well. I mean, he really played well outside of jumping all sides. Uh, he played some good football. I just think their confidence is growing right now. But we just got to improve some, some some technique stuff, some recognition stuff, some just base fundamental stuff on a few things that, that you know we, we've done that we got to clean up if we're gonna if we're gonna be special on offense and uh, the guys are taking pride in that they know I mean we watch the tape we, you know we, we it's just some things that they're just going crap you know and they want to improve and 
we will. But I'm proud of those guys. I think John Simpson is is really taken off. Uh, he didn't play well. I think it was the A&M game. He really did not play well. But, buddy, since then, he has really become steady and consistent. Of course, Mitch, he was ACC lineman of the week. I mean, you just kind of you just, you just kind of know what you're going to get with him. I mean, it was just – I mean, he's as steady a player as I've ever coached. Uh, you know, Fauci has come on and, and has played well. Uh, you know, we've been kind of rotating guys at guard a little bit, developing some depth there. I think Bockhorst, you know, Bockhorst went in there on that last drive and played a few plays, and Bockhorst did a great job. You know, he didn't flinch. Uh, so I think he's a kid that's that's really coming on. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a good situation. And then our versatility came through for us. You know, the, we, we, Robbie does a good job. I mean, we, we make those guys cross train, the guys who can. Uh, Jackson Carmen has gotten some good, good experience. Uh, in, the, in the first part of the season, he didn't get in there Saturday, but he's got some good experience. His confidence is growing. Uh, what, a, what a player he's going to be. So I like where we are up front. When you're talking about balance, you know, Mike Leach describes balance as getting it to both your inside outside receivers at equal rate. Some people talk about balance, you know, equal running and passing. What does, you know, balance on offense or defense mean to you? Uh, at the end of the season, when you look at us, uh, we, we, we had some semblance of balance. There's going to be some games where it's going to be out of whack a little bit. Uh, but balance to me is having an offense that has the ability to take what they're going to give you. They, they can't defend everything. And so you got to be good enough to exploit their weakness, uh, the weakness of the defense. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, be good enough at times to run it when – Everybody knows you're going to run it. And uh, so I think that that's the type of stuff that needs to, to balance and be able to throw it, uh, you know, when, when everybody knows you need to throw it. So to win a game. Uh, and I think when you can do that, you have the ability to win either way. Uh, when it's all said and done, even though some games one way or another, you've got, you've got pretty good balance in what you're doing at the end of the year. Do you like having the two most up to both teams on your schedule offensively? No, I, I mean, it kind of worked out good. Uh, it's a, I mean, we had three out of the first four games in triple option. Uh, I don't think that was that was bad. But, uh, no, I think it's good. I, think, I mean, they're, they're faster than Syracuse. I think they had one game with 105 snaps. Uh, but uh, so we'll see. You know, but it, it'll be good. And, again, ask your balance question. You can't run you, – you can't have balance if you cannot run the ball, if you're not committed to running the ball. We've always been a team that's been built on trying to run the football, and that creates everything else. Coach, where did the decision to start including Xavier Thomas on the field with Cleveland and Austin and Christian come to be? Uh, last week, you know, just – y'all watching the game too, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's pretty you – know, we got – and then, you know, their style of play, watching our game against them last year. Uh, you know, we, obviously, we played – triple option teams three out of four games. So we really have not played. And even Texas A&M, we had some, it's only game that, you know, they're more of a run oriented team, uh, but they hurt us in the passing game. And I think we got better in that area as far as some of the busts and stuff like that. But, but we hadn't seen anything like we were getting ready to play. And watching the tape from last year and dealing with this quarterback, man, he, he hurt us. Uh, and he's just, he hurt us the other day. We should have sacked him five times. Five times, we should have five sacks. And he just got eyes in the back of his head. We got him dead to rights and just boom, he spins out and we miss him. Uh, or he's he's going down and gets rid of the ball. He's just a really crafty player. And uh, and there was times last year where he hit a, he hit, he found a rush lane and and we just, we just couldn't go get him. Uh, and, you know, I just, I just felt like that, you know, let's, in those certain situations, let's let's use Xavier, uh, and that's, that's what we did. So we had a little indie package, and he was a spy guy, he was a rush guy, um, and uh, he did a heck of a job for us. And so he, he's just he, he's he's just taken off like a rocket ship. I mean, it's, and I and I thought we probably did a poor job of rotating our guys uh, last week. Uh, I mean, he he played a lot, but but he needs he needs more reps uh, because I thought. Clee and Austin got a little tired. I mean, they played 60, 60 snaps or more. 
And, you know, I felt like there was a couple of plays where I saw a little bit of fatigue. Uh, that's a lot of snaps, especially when you're playing an up-tempo team and you're running all over the place, the ball's on the edge. I mean, the quarterback's running around. Uh, so I'm glad that uh, we were able to get him in the game. And I mean, that kid is, is – he's not a complete player yet by any stretch of the imagination, but but he plays full speed and his first step is special. Uh, he's 260 pounds, he's a good tackler, um, and he knows how to go get the quarterback. So I, I think uh, you'll continue to see his, his opportunity uh, increase because he's earned it and we're starting to trust him more. Y'all haven't faced much drop back at all. Do you think that you face more of a corpus of he's going to be more of a? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He's, I don't care what we see the rest of the season. Uh, he, he's a football player and a uh, really good one. So he's his, his opportunity will continue to, to grow because uh, he's productive. You know, he's productive. How is Trayvon coming along? Do you know yet if he'll be able to go Saturday? Uh, he's, he's coming along good. And, uh, you know, like I said last night, I, I, I expect everybody to, to be able to go at this point. Last one here in the back. Coach, I understand the surface reasoning. Man, where were you last week? Uh, is there something I'm missing this week? <laughs> Sorry, man. A little bit of news. I understand the surface reasoning for your comment about the growth chart. First string quarterback wins the game yeah. before you come back from behind to avoid an upset and all of that. But this is, you've got guys that are playoff season. You have national champions on your roster. So, what is there that we don't see from the outside? Well, uh, and, and it wasn't and it wasn't just a third team quarterback, you know. Like I said earlier, it's Tremaine gone, uh, Pollard out, Savannah so Kincaid playing to win it type deal. Uh, uh, Mark Fields is out. Trayvon Mullen, our starting corner against an NFL quarterback, is out. So I got a true freshman out there who hadn't played a lick in, in you know in past situations other than practice, and now he's going against a gunslinger and uh, good wideouts. And he's out there having to play a whole game, basically, at corner. Uh, so there was just a lot of that, you know, in our team. Uh, you know, it was it was it was awesome. Uh, not to mention, uh, you know, just the drama of the week and, and, and all the distractions and all that stuff. Um, so I think every team, you know, there's 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 this galvanizing moment usually, uh, but but every team has a different chemistry. The chemistry and the leadership of your team are the two most underrated things in football. You know, everybody just looks at them and they go, ooh, man, they're really talented. Oh, man, they got all these guys back, or whatever it may be. And that's great, but it, chemistry and leadership and morale, those are, those are very undervalued aspects that a lot of people don't think about. And uh, that really, truly determine uh, the type of season that you're going to have. You know, you can't just be talented. Uh, there's a lot of talented teams out there that don't have they have underachieving seasons uh, because of those reasons. Maybe their chemistry is not very good. They're not a very selfless team. Uh, you know, their commitment's not what it needs to be. They're distracted. You know, they're looking at this and looking at that. You know, whatever it may be. Uh, Maybe they don't like each other very well. Uh, there, there's I mean, the leadership's not very good. The best players on your team, you know, uh, are, aren't aren't committed like they need to be. And so it, it's I've been a part of of all of the above uh, throughout my career. That's for sure. But you know, this team, this team's a special group. It's a special group, and I knew that. I knew that, and I've seen nothing to make me think any different, but what I saw in them last week, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, uh, at the hotel on Friday, and our meeting Friday night, and then, and then what I witnessed, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. And so it literally was, I, I, it's like you're physically able to watch them grow three inches. Uh, so it was pretty cool uh, to see it come together. And, uh, and to see the leaders of this team uh, do just that, lead and serve, it's awesome.
Okay. 